1995, a determined little nine-year-old boy waltzed up to the McLaren team boss Ron Dennis at an award ceremony, asked for an autograph and boldly proclaimed, Hi, I'm Lewis Hamilton. I've won the British Championship and one day, mark my words, I'll be racing incredible cars. Little did we know, this kid that started out driving RC cars would go on to be arguably one of the best drivers to ever grace the track. Although, despite that, Lewis hasn't exactly had the best of times recently, with many speculating he's way past his best and might even retire. Last I checked, he was still pretty good. So naturally, I had to ask the question, what the fuck is going on with Lewis Hamilton? Born on the 7th of January 1985 in Stevenage, United Kingdom, Lewis had big dreams and an even bigger personality that won the hearts of many that came across him. His father, Anthony Hamilton, serving as both mentor and manager, dedicated himself tirelessly to advancing Lewis's racing career. Working day and night, he even held three different jobs at one point to support his son's ambitions. Lewis's journey in racing began at the age of eight, when he received a well-used go-kart, an investment nearly equivalent to the family's modest monthly income. So now that Lewis had his first go-kart at the age of eight, he began karting. The rest, as they say, is history. He dominated the karting scene. His talent was undeniable, and in 1998, he was officially signed to the McLaren Driver Development Support Program at the tender age of 13, becoming the youngest driver contracted by an F1 team at the time. In 1999, Lewis's talent shone even brighter as he graduated to the Junior Intercontinental A-Level, securing a remarkable second place in the McLaren Mercedes Champions of the Future. The following year, he had an astounding Hall of Wind, claiming the European Champion title in Formula A with an exceptional clean sweep of all four rounds. In 2001, he fearlessly faced the legendary Michael Schumacher at the German's home track in Kirpen. Though he finished behind the illustrious Ferrari star who already had four world championships to his name, Hamilton's unyielding spirit and determination remained unshaken. Funnily enough, 20 years later, it would be Lewis overtaking Michael just in a different way. Stepping up into car racing, Hamilton's initial test for Manor Motorsport in Formula Renault didn't start smoothly, but by the end of the 2002 season, Hamilton achieved three wins, ultimately securing a commendable third place finish in the championship. The following year, he displayed sheer dominance, winning all but one of the next 10 races and storming to the title with 10 wins. Hamilton's success in Formula 3 was equally impressive, as he dominated the 2005 F3 Euro Series, claiming an astounding 15 victories out of 20 races. Yeah, who was surprised at this point? In 2006, Lewis would set fire to the GP2 Championship, winning the title in his very first attempt. Joining the ART team, which had previously helped Nico Rosberg make his way to Formula One, in 2007, Lewis Hamilton made his much-anticipated Formula One debut with McLaren, and his rookie season was nothing short of sensational. Right from his first race, he displayed incredible talent, Finishing on the podium and maintaining this streak for nine consecutive races, he secured his first Formula One win in Canada, propelling him to a 12-point lead in the championship. An intriguing incident occurred during qualifying at the Hungarian Grand Prix, where Hamilton ignored team instructions to let Alonso pass, resulting in a pole position for himself. He went on to win the race. Despite his strong performances, a series of misfortunes and self-inflicted errors in the last two races, like the time he went gravel swimming in China, allowed Kimi Raikkonen to snatch the championship by a single point. In 2008, Lewis Hamilton continued with McLaren, while his former teammate Fernando Alonso departed, making way for Heike Kovalainen. Hamilton's second season in Formula One proved to be more challenging. Throughout the season, series mistakes marred some of his races, including Bahrain, Canada, France, and Japan. Hamilton accumulated five separate penalties over the course of the year. Despite the setbacks, he bounced back to dominate the Chinese Grand Prix, positioning himself perfectly for a shot at the championship in the final race. Learning from his experiences in 2007, He adopted an ultra-conservative approach at Interlagos, narrowly securing the title by a single point with a famous last lap switch. Slowly. It is, That's it's gone. gone! Oh my goodness me! Hamilton's back in position again! A million, a hundred thousand local hearts sink in the grandstands. The boy from Stevenage had done it. Against all odds, against all discrimination, against all logic. Lewis Hamilton was a world champion.
In 2009, the reigning world champion started the season with high hopes of defending his title. However, McLaren's new car, the MP424, struggled to match the pace of their rivals, putting Hamilton at a disadvantage from the beginning. And to make things worse, Hamilton and his team were accused of providing misleading information to the race stewards about an incident involving Jarno Trulli during a safety car period. The stewards found them guilty, leading to Hamilton's disqualification from the race results. Despite a challenging start to the season, Hamilton's determination and skill allowed him to climb up to a commendable fifth place in the championship standings. In 2010, Hamilton aimed to reclaim the world championship with McLaren's new car, the MP425, which proved to be more competitive than its predecessor. Hamilton started the season strongly with victories in Turkey and Canada, but his title campaign encountered setbacks in Italy and Singapore due to collisions that resulted in him retiring from both races. Another retirement. Although Hamilton remained in contention until the final round of the season, he narrowly missed out on the title, finishing in fourth place overall in the championship standings. The 2011 season was a challenging one for Lewis Hamilton at McLaren. While Sebastian Vettel dominated the championship, Hamilton secured three wins during a season filled with scrappy and error strewn performances. As the season progressed, it became apparent that Button was better at managing the new specification Pirelli tyres compared to Hamilton. Button consistently outperformed Hamilton on the track, and for the first time in his career, Hamilton was beaten in the point standings by his teammates. Throughout the rest of his career so far, Lewis has only been beaten by his teammate two more times in 12 years. Guess that really left a bad taste in his mouth, huh? In 2012, despite a promising start for McLaren's MP427 car, Hamilton faced a series of frustrating retirements and reliability issues that hindered his championship chances early on. However, Hamilton's talent shone through as he secured his first win of the season in Canada, followed by further triumphs in Hungary, Italy, and America. As Hamilton's contract with McLaren approached its end, speculation grew about his future in the sport. Surprising many, he made a definitive announcement after the Singapore Grand Prix, revealing his departure from McLaren and the start of an exciting new chapter with Mercedes. 2012 proved to be quite the season in general. 2012 proved to be quite the season indeed. I have a video out on it that you should definitely go check out after this video. And while you're at it, why not subscribe to the channel? In 2013, Lewis Hamilton's decision to join Mercedes proved to be a well-timed move. While McLaren faced a slump, Mercedes rose to the occasion with three victories and a strong second place finish in the championship standings. Hamilton claimed his only win of the season at the Hungarian Grand Prix, marking his first victory for the team. In 2014, any doubts about Hamilton's move to Mercedes were swiftly dismissed. The team's W05 car dominated the championship, and Hamilton rightfully clinched his second Formula One World Championship. Hamilton's performances remained strong, with a series of four consecutive wins, showcasing his unwavering determination. Despite some controversial moments, including an incident with Rosberg in Monaco during qualifying. Yeah, that was very good again. Very good. Hamilton reasserted himself with a series of five wins, setting the stage for the season finale. The double point system added tension to the championship battle, but Hamilton's comfortable lead and Rosberg's misfortune in the final race secured the title for Hamilton. In 2015, Hamilton continued his dominance, winning another world championship and cementing his status as one of the sport's greats. Hamilton's excellent form continued with a third victory at his home race and consistent podium finishes alongside Rosberg, and a crucial win in the USA secured his fourth world championship title. Rosberg's head was on Jupiter at this point. He simply could not let Lewis dunk on him for a third season in a row. So, the stage was set for an epic showdown between the Mercedes specialists in 2016. <laughs> Hamilton faced stiff competition from Rosberg and the challenging task of retaining his title. The season was filled with ups and downs, with some setbacks due to car reliability in his own starts. Nevertheless, Hamilton displayed exceptional skill, winning 10 races and showcasing his determination to the very end. Though he put up a fight in the final four races, Hamilton narrowly missed out on the championship, and Rosberg secured the title by finishing on the podium. Rosberg was so overjoyed by finally getting the better of Hamilton that he announced his retirement. Yeah, the madman really did that. 
Fast forward to 2017, and Rosberg's sudden retirement had thrown a spanner in the works for Mercedes, and to Valtteri Bottas, who took on the challenge to partner up with Hamilton. Hamilton faced a formidable challenge from a resurgent Ferrari, with Sebastian Vettel snatching the season-opening race in Australia. The two duked it out, with thrilling scraps in Spain and an unfortunate headrest failure in Azerbaijan. Okay, Lewis, looks like headrest is just a little bit loose at the back. Uh, just see if you can pull it into position on the straight. But Hamilton wasn't one to give up, and he took charge after the summer break, reeling off wins and claiming the championship crown in a dramatic fashion. The following year, in 2018, Hamilton had his work cut out for him in the early races. Ferrari seemed to have found their mojo, but our champ fought back hard, bagging wins in France and Germany. Hamilton's star kept shining bright as he secured his fifth world championship in Mexico, but he didn't stop there. He added more wins in Brazil and Abu Dhabi, closing in on Michael Schumacher's records. 2019 brought a new challenge from Ferrari, but Hamilton fought back with a vengeance. The rivalry with Bottas went will to will for a little while, but Hamilton's race wins kept pulling up, securing his sixth title with three races to spare. 2020 was a year like no other, with the coronavirus pandemic disrupting the season. Hamilton made history both on and off the track, using his platform to advocate for human rights and racial equality. And let's not forget his incredible performance on the track, snatching race victories left and right, and equaling Michael Schumacher's seven World Drivers' Championship victories. Things would be quite different in 2021, though, when the Bulls turned up to the party with a hungry Max Verstappen. In 2021, Lewis Hamilton faced an intense battle for an unprecedented eighth World Championship title with Max Verstappen proving to be his formidable adversary. The rivalry between Hamilton and Verstappen was not without controversy. A dramatic collision in Silverstone and a subsequent clash in Monza added tension to their rivalry, culminating in a dramatic showdown in Saudi Arabia that left them tied on points heading into the final race of the season. The championship decider in Abu Dhabi was fraught with drama, with a late safety car reshuffling the order and costing Hamilton the lead and ultimately the tie. Mercedes' protest was met with disappointment, and Hamilton ultimately lost the championship to Verstappen. Lewis was heartbroken. Boy, if you think that was bad, wait until you hear about 2022. In 2022, Hamilton faced a challenging season with Mercedes, marked by the introduction of new technical regulations. The team struggled to maintain its former dominance, with Mercedes going winless until the penultimate round. His new teammate, George Russell, secured the team's sole victory. Lewis didn't win a single race, a first in his incredible career. During the Azerbaijan Grand Prix, the true extent of his suffering became painfully evident. Back injuries, a cruel consequence of the car's relentless porpoising issues, left him in agony. As he crossed the finish line, the toll was unbearable. Struggling to exit the car, he could barely find the strength to stand. Despite these initial difficulties, Lewis would continue to showcase his tenacity with podium finishes and runner-up spots, even challenging Verstappen for a win at the United States Grand Prix. But alas, it wasn't quite enough. In 2023, although Mercedes have picked up the slack, looking increasingly competitive every weekend, Hamilton's contractual situation has still been a major topic of discussion. Reports suggested he demanded a long-term deal with the team. Both Hamilton and Mercedes boss Toto Wolff hinted at an impending contract renewal. We get this question basically every race weekend and we have such a good relationship uh, that we dread the moment we need to talk about money. So uh, it's going to happen soon. While Verstappen is out there on a joyride, leading the championship standings, the race for second place is still wide open. Our man Sergio Perez, driving the same beastly machine as the dominant Dutchman, should have been a shoe-in for P2. But alas, poor form put a chink in his armor, opening the door for others to seize the opportunity and have a crack at it. Fernando Alonso, with his impressive six podiums in the first ten races, is indeed a leading contender in this gripping battle. But Hamilton is hot on his tail, raring to go. Consistency has been the name of the game for our Mercedes man. He has a few years left in the sport and has that one record to break. Rumors circulated about Ferrari's interest in signing Hamilton, with reports suggesting that Ferrari were looking to give the entire grid anxiety by lining Lewis Hamilton up alongside their golden boy, Charles Leclerc. 
a driver that also exploded onto the scene quite like Lewis actually. So where does Lewis go from here? Let me know what you think in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you check out the other video I made on whatever the f is going on with Charles Leclerc. And there you can also listen to my excellent <coughs> pronunciation of names. Ciao!